Hi, this is Kara Cozier, and I'm here with Ileana Shainer uh, from South Carolina Kia Keto. And we're going to just have a little chat today about um, what a keto is and a little bit about what she does here uh, at this facility. Uh, really exciting meeting her. She's going to be speaking at the conference coming up in January at Zen in downtown Greenville, South Carolina with Whole Health Nation. We're really excited about that event. Uh, so just tell me a little bit about what you do here, how you got started in, in this practice. Well, this is South Carolina Key Aikido, and we're located on Great Hampton Boulevard in Greenville, South Carolina. And this is a Key Aikido Dojo. So Key Aikido was founded by Kohei Sensei, Koichi Kohei Sensei. He was born in 1920. He died in 2011. So coming up in October would be his 100th birthday. And so in October, we're having a big um, a seminar and intensive in Tochigi, Japan at the Key Aikido headquarters to celebrate his 100th birthday. He began training in a meditation dojo called Ichikukai Dojo, which is a very vigorous um, meditation hall where they would train a bell. And this was their meditation. They would do it for three days at a time with people encouraging or smacking you on the back with the band <laughs> <Encouraging>. rod, encouraging <laughs> you to continue. And the purpose was to strengthen your mind and to practice giving 100% in everything that you do in daily life. When he went to see if he could study at this dojo, the, the teacher there said, you're not quite ready, you're not physically strong enough. First begin with Zazen, seated meditation. So Toy Sensei practiced seated meditation, he learned to strengthen his mind, and within six months, he was allowed to come and train in this vigorous meditation, which this bell is used. And the chanting, each in line with the standing on this bell for three days. So, wow. After six months of strengthening, Toy Sensei was then invited to come train, where he learned from that training in Misogi at Ichikukai Dojo how to train. That is the discipline of using your mind and body together and giving 100% with every swing of the bell, therefore knowing that the universe is going to refill your energy. So with you giving 100%, it's like a vacuum creates a vacuum so that your energy can be restored. This was very helpful for his health. So he did that for three days straight, like yes, and twenty-four hours. Uh, or or is there break? I mean, there's there's, there's, there's sleeping. Days. There's some sleeping. Oh, there are okay, there's some. Okay, okay. <laughs> but it was like the better part of three days. Oh my goodness! Wow. So um, so each Kukai Dojo was uh, with, um, the sensei there, Okura Sensei, was one of his main teachers who taught him how to train. Another one of his main teachers, which he came to later as he was um, continuing to practice judo, uh, was um, Nakamura Tempu Sensei. Nakamura Tempu Sensei was um, a doctor. He was a Western doctor as well as a, a Japanese philosopher. And he was searching for himself for a cure for his tuberculosis. So he received his MD at Columbia University. He later went back to Japan. He studied all kinds of European philosophers and studied yoga in India. And he is thought to be the father of Japanese yoga. Shin Shin Toitsudo is what he taught. He taught Toy Sensei that mind leads body. So how you think affects your body. And this was one of the main things that he was interested in in his studies because he was a, a doctor, he was interested in the scientific method. He noticed that with many of his patients, those who had a positive attitude had much more extensive results in their healing. So once again, um, Tempo Sensei was interested in improving health, and this was his search. So from, Toy, from Nakamura Tempo Sensei, Toy Sensei learned, mind leads body. Mm -hmm. Finally, Toya Sensei met Ueshiba Sensei, who is the father of Aikido, not Ki Aikido, but Aikido. And from, from Ueshiba Sensei, who we uh, honorifically call O Sensei, he learned how to relax completely. So 
So he noticed that in all of Ueshiba Sensei, Ueshiba Sensei, when Toy Sensei met him, was an older man, quite old. He was small, maybe five feet tall, and he could throw people around like nothing. Like it was so easy for him. However, he spoke in sort of mystical terms because of his um, upbringing in rural Japan. He didn't have more than a third grade education. And he talked about purple smoke and the belly and things that Toy Sensei thought would be difficult to teach to the everyday person. But as he observed Go Sensei, he realized that what he was doing was relaxing completely. So from these three main teachers, Toy Sensei learned how to train mind leads body and relax completely. These are um, part of the foundational four basic principles, some of which I'm going to share with you today, um, that comprise our art of Ki Aikido. Now when people think of Ki Aikido, you probably think of a martial art, mm -hmm. but actually we have five disciplines. We have Kino Kokyuho, which is a breathing technique, key breathing. Kino Seizaho, it's a meditation technique, key meditation. The third one is Kyatsu Ryoho, which is a healing technique of following points along meridians of the body. So it's physically um, encouraging your natural healing response. Fourth is the bell meditation that I shared with you early on, uh, called Sokushin no Gyo. It's a vigorous meditation with the bell and chanting. And fifth is the Aikido techniques, the martial technique. So through these five techniques, or five different paths that we have in Ki Aikido, the purpose is to realize your oneness with the universe and your natural power when you coordinate your mind and body in everything that you do in daily life. So in my own experience, I was a graduate student at the University of Maryland in 1992, and my roommate had been, uh, an, she was an alum of Furman University where she trained in Ki Aikido. She shared with me the four basic principles, and as soon as I felt them, I knew that my piano playing would improve. I was a graduate student in piano performance. I had also been a lifelong athlete, so I had heard sort of a variation of some of these principles before in different language. They seemed familiar and definitely I could feel them right away. So when I learned the principles, I knew that I wanted to train this art to improve my piano playing. Little did I know that it would improve everything that I do in daily life and serve as a, a path, a spiritual path, as well as a path to um, self-actualization and one that gets deeper and deeper the more that you practice, as many of our practices do. So, that's how I came to Ki Aikido. That's, uh, that's just an amazing story. I love hearing it. Like all, I, what I like is the journey that he took and how he came across these teachers. And I find that phrase um, so often resonates with me is like when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And to hear his story and how yes. he traveled through and, and met different teachers along the way and came to a point where he was able to put them to, all the teachings together and create something amazing. Now, how late in his life did he start to, did he create Ki Aikido? Ki Aikido, um, so he was actually by each of those three teachers that I mentioned to you, mm -hmm. he was invited by each of them to be their successor in their particular um, discipline. Okay. He. Um, he did accept that role from the from the Aikido Sensei O oh Sensei, and that was in in 1953. He brought Aikido to the U.S. to the Hawaiian Islands, but soon he realized that he wanted to discuss Ki. He wanted to teach Ki, which I will explain to you what that means, um, as incorporated in the Aikido techniques and in a way that was scientific that people could explain no matter your religion, no matter your beliefs or creed, that you, you, he wanted a way to explain for each person to experience because talking about something isn't really experiencing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So in 1973, he founded the Key Society and he broke away from, um, from 
the Aikido school, which was founded by his teacher, and he began teaching Shin Shin Toitsu Aikido. So let me explain to you a little bit what that is. This is key. This is a uh, Chinese kanji, but um, Japanese people use the same, same kanji, but they're pronounced differently in Japanese. This is your life force energy, ki. These symbols represent like a cloud, which is air and water. And this cross here with these four dots is um, symbolic of a rice field, so sustenance of food. So together they create your life force energy. So in Toy Sensei's um, naming our school of, of Aikido, Shin Shin Toitsu Aikido, Shin and Shin are two separate kanji, just as this is. When they're separate, the first one is Kokoro or mind, heart. The other, karada, means body. However, when those two characters are placed next to each other, they are pronounced the same, even in the language representing that mind and body are not separate. So when you put those two characters together, they're pronounced the same, shin shin. Toetsu means realization or unification. Literally unification, we prefer the translation of realization because unification implies two separate things. But mind and body, you know that your mind is in your entire body. It's not in your brain. Our brain is an organ that's here. But mind, every single cell in your body has intelligence and it's communicating with the whole self and each other. So, shin shin toitsu means mind-body realization or oneness. Aikido, I is, this, is the character for love or harmony. Ki, as I explained, is your life force energy. And Do is the way. So the way to experiencing oneness with the universe through your mind-body connection. That's the long name of Ki Aikido. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> So, that said, Toy Sensei, in, in the martial aspect of, of Aikido, he did teach techniques, but he, we also have a separate curriculum for teaching mind-body oneness that doesn't involve throwing people. In fact, it just involves experiencing how your body changes when you use your mind differently. So, would you like to experience it? Oh, I absolutely would. Okay, <laughs> okay. so Kara, what I want to share with you are some of Toy Sensei's four basic principles. These are the four basic principles that you can apply to anything in daily life to access your full power. So Toy Sensei talked about our body as being like the tip of the iceberg. This is just the surface, what's above the surface of the ocean that you can see. But as we all know, an iceberg is like a mountain that's underneath the ocean. Most of it is underneath, and that is the power of our mind. So when we combine the power of our mind and body together, then we can use our natural, all of our power. Okay, so if you will face this way, I want to show you that when you use your mind differently, you will get a different result in your body. So the first um, thing I'd like you to do is rise up on your toes because we're going to check in with your posture. And then gently come down, leaving the weight on the balls of your feet. That's it and not tipping to your heels. Nice. Now the first thing we're gonna do is an experiment. This is an experience for you, and there's going to be one thing that will change in each experiment. For now, I want you to bring your mind up to the top of your head. Okay, so think on the top of your head, and I'm gonna place my hand on your sternum, is that okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give gentle pressure backwards. You're thinking on top of your head. That's the only thing you're doing. Okay, and you have this experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's experience A. So now please rise up on your toes again. Come back down, leaving the weight on the balls of your feet. Nice. And now this time, let your mind fall down several inches below your belly button. So for a moment, bring your fingers to your abdomen and tighten your abs 
If you can feel tension there, then go lower. So basically you're coming to the top of your pubic bone. Okay, this is the physiological center of gravity where the weight of your upper body rests. So this is your natural center. And then relaxing your arms again. Let's reestablish your posture. Sorry, I just started talking again. So rise up on your toes and gently down. Nice. Okay, now allow your mind to drop down to that, what we call one point, your physiological center. And I am going to give you the same experience of touching and pressing back. So let's do the two. Wow, that was so different. The two sensations. I felt so much more grounded. Like, yes. All right. So first, bring your mind up here. And you're not trying to resist me in any way. You're simply one variable. Your mind is either here or here. So let's come up here. Your posture looks I can nice. actually, I can actually almost feel my body want to go back down a bit. Yes, I huh. experienced that too. Huh. So first. Thinking on top of your head, it's very easy to move her. And then dropping your mind down. I can just feel the weight of my falls my feet get heavier. Now, do you feel that? Feel your stability. I, that's almost... And now I'm quite increasing the pressure because now she has more confidence in this feeling. Okay, I want you to feel it on me too. So you can feel it from what we call the tester's perspective. We try not to talk about the test because people want to pass tests. Right. So if you think you're supposed to stand, then you may do something. No, Toy Sensei is just, this is an experiment. There is one variable, it's your mind. So first, I'm going to rise up on the balls of my feet, come down, straight down, and I'm going to think on top of my head. And then with this inside arm, if you'll touch my sternum and just press back. It doesn't take very much super light for me to lose my balance. Now, if I drop my mind down to here, to my one point, and you give the same test, go ahead and press. You're like, and press, and press. It's just like rock solid. Yeah. You're like, a, really like a concrete pylon or something. <laughs> yes. It's really super different. So when you use your mind differently, amazing. you get a different result. That's so so cool. now, yeah. let's build on that feeling. So you have your one point here. Let your mind come down to your one point. And that's all. Again, I'm gonna to touch your sternum. Now, this is really strong. I'm pressing quite hard. And what if I say, could you please walk forward? Back. <laughs> Are you? Oh, I mean, like, no. I could go under your hand. She's not. Yeah. But here's why. Because you're moving from where I'm holding you. What happens if you move from where I'm not holding you? So first, let's go back, keep one point. Bring your mind to, down to your center. Gently do a check in here. This is already very strong. Now, yes, I'm pushing here. Yes, you have this stress, but it doesn't matter. You can drop your mind out there and go from down here where I'm not holding. Just walk from your side. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, you're messing with my head. Yes, <laughs> this is a change. Oh, you that's so interesting. It generally tends to go to a conflict. Right, and so I was trying to push through here, and instead I moved my mind. Yes. That's so that I could move from a different location. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Get even more confident. Mind right? blown. Because you're already, your, one, your key point point is really strong already. And you can even relax more physically. Okay, now, bring your mind down to there. And just walk from there. Yes, go. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. That's so super, that's just shifting. Yeah, shifting your mind, thinking differently. Not focusing on the point of resistance. Yes. Just focusing anywhere else. But since I focused here, which is a strong point. This is your natural, my natural balance point. point. Your natural balance yeah. point. That's why that was even easier. Yes. So okay. with, regard, it all together. with regard to Whole Health Nation, yeah. um, the title of, of the class we're going to do is When You're One with the Universe, You Can Use Your Mind Freely. Key flows freely. When you're thinking of a conflict, 
You're not one with the universe. You're thinking me, you. Collision. We're separate. We're not one. When you change your mind, you can move from somewhere else other than that point of contention. So I want you to feel it. Same thing, give me the test that I was giving you mm -hmm. where you're checking my stability first. Okay, so press. And I know you're strong, because I know something about what you've been through. Okay, so press really hard, keep pressing. Now this is what it's like if I try to move from where you're pressing me. Yeah. Okay, keep pressing really hard. But if I move from here, Oh wow! <laughs> this is totally. I can, and, 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 and like from my perspective, I can just feel you. I can feel you drop. Like yes, it's I, I can powerful. feel the change of like you went from literally pushing here to moving here. Yes, that's it's. Cool. It's like you can say, "Oh yeah, I feel the stress." Daily life, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I have the stress, but it doesn't mean that you have to act from that place of stress. Yes, that stress exists. And I still have plenty of other choices if I don't become attached or stuck or fixated on my agenda. If I can try to relax and keep one point, physically drop your mind down, it changes your state. It changes your state. So that's the first of the four basic principles, is keep one point. I'm gonna to jump to the fourth one um, in the interest of time. And so now, Toy Sensei, this pedagogy is amazing because as you've already experienced, you can feel it right away. Mm -hmm. You can feel the difference. So let's do another experiment. This basic principle is called extend key. Key, your life force energy. Mm -hmm. When you're sending your mind through your fingertips, this is called extend key. Okay. This is the test that Toy Sensei gives us. It's so easy to Yes. So I'm just doing it. You become really confident and really great at doing this well. That's really cool. So, so first, I'd like you to extend your arm. This one is going over here. And I want you to make a fist. Oh, wait, before that. I'm going to try to bend your arm this way. Okay? Okay. Your arm naturally bends this way, so this is the way I'm going to bend it. <laughs> this is true. So, <laughs> I want you to use your physical power, that is the power of the top of the iceberg only. Use your physical power and do not let me bend your arm. Okay, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay. Is this comfortable for you? No, it's not comfortable. Okay. It's really hard. It's really uncomfortable for me too. <laughs> okay, so let's see if there's a better way. Okay. That's like my workout. <laughs> Okay, so once again, I want you to raise your arm and relax. Imagine that that wall is on fire and in your belly is a reservoir of water, let's say the ocean of water. Up through your torso is a huge tube and this is the fire hose, this is the nozzle of the fire hose and you're spraying that water all over that wall to put out that fire. And that is the image that I would like for you to hold. So there's this, all this pressure coming through this arm. How do you feel? It's so easy compared to that. That was so easy. <laughs> do you want to try it again? Let's just check. Let's just make sure it wasn't just this, this one. It's really cool. Okay, first, physical force. All right. Using physical force. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to bend your arm now. Okay. I have like stress in my Yeah, no, I think it's good. It's probably not good for me. <laughs> okay, so then instead, extend your arm. Good. Even more relaxed. The principle I don't have to fight this one. The principle that we skipped was easy. Relax from sleeping. I can learn that one. So, I'm going to raise your arm for you. Okay. Okay, thanks. It's even easier. Yeah. And then you extend your fingertips. Good. You can even relax more. So really, this is just as if you were raising your arm to pick up a glass or something. Now, with your mind, sending the water through your fingertips. And I'm pressing really hard. I can't help but laugh. That's actually ridiculous. <laughs> awesome. 
hose. How did I create experience it too? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, fire hose. Let's make the hose. Right. The first, first, the first physical. physical. Yeah. Right here? Right. Yes. And then right. on my wrist. So figure out how you're doing so you know. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first. Physical. Both ways are strong, but this is, takes way too much energy. This is a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. And then fire hose. Fire hose. Amazing because your hand is so loose, like your no tension. And even if you are trying to bend me, it doesn't mean I can't move. I can still move. So keep trying to bend. I can still move freely anytime. If I don't try to clash with where you're holding me. Yeah. Yes. So let's build on this. Let's build your power, your natural. We haven't. We haven't done any weightlifting in here. We haven't done anything other than change how you use your mind. So let's do one more time. Extend your arm. And maybe using what you know now, please walk forward. Yes. Very good. <laughs> okay. I'm learning things. How would, how would it work good. if you walk from where I'm holding you? What would it feel like to you? Go, go for it. And Oh, yes. whoa! Yes. Yeah, like I'm actually so right into me, right? Oh my goodness, that's amazing. But even with this, you yeah. and your natural power here, walk from your one. No, I can just decide your fingers. I can just, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. That's cool because that time, it's like I knew what I needed to do to get, to yes. guess, oh, like, a, not, kind of like around, I guess. Yeah. You're just not going into the door. Like yeah. This is why Aikido is a really excellent um, art martial art for women because uh, oftentimes men's physical power is greater than ours. Mm -hmm. But if we are not meeting physical power with physical power, then it's a non-issue. It's easy to move if you're moving from where you're not being held. Which takes me to now the first Aikido technique that we learned mm -hmm. that I'd like to share with you the beginner one all the time. Until we get stuck, until we try to move into that place of where we're being held, or pushing against the conflict, or trying to control, or trying, that's when our mind gets stuck. Key stops. So this is like, if we were to pull that into like looking at life stuff, you know, moving in resistance, you know, ha like moving into trying to force something to happen that isn't for you. Yes. Isn't yours. Yes. Same thing. Yes. And we talked a little bit about that last yes. time we met. Too. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now you know how to keep one point mm -hmm. and how to extend key. Mm -hmm. So we teach the first Aikido technique is I'm going to offer you my hand and you're going to grab with the opposite hand. Okay. Now the idea here is that your key is moving this way. Your intention is going this way. Mine is going this way. This is the perfect opportunity for a conflict. Because if you're pushing here, and I'm pushing here, you can push and keep one point at the same time. Good. This is awesome. We have an awesome conflict here. But we don't want a conflict. No. Okay, so what we practice is, what do we do with this conflict? First, I'm going to check to see if you're keeping one point. So drop your mind down. And you should be quite stable when I check. Yes. You too. You check me in this way, and I'll keep one point, and I'm stable. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, I want to move from where you are not holding me. You're holding my wrist. Mm -hmm. So if I begin my movement from here, I'm going to create a collision, a conflict. But you're not holding my one point. So I can easily move this way. And now, I'm looking at what you're looking at. Oh, I'm going to see your point of view. And how likely are you to want to see my point of view if first I see yours, and then you can come see mine. So this is a way of moving without creating conflict. So do you do this with your husband at home? Yeah. Well, yeah, we work on it. <laughs> like, here, let me show you this conflict. <laughs> we do it a lot in the dojo, and we work on it at home 24-7. That's what Chase Sensei wanted to teach us, yeah. key in daily life. No, we don't want to throw people around. We're, we're hopefully not going to be attacked in the street. The purpose is to improve your daily life. So that's why these techniques are so awesome. Okay, I want you to feel it. Okay. So you offer your hand, 
Yes. And your mind is going this way, mm -hmm. and mine is going this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check your one point. Yes, and you can check mine. You don't have to grab. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, let me just have your wrist, and you walk around behind me so that your hips are just slightly behind mine, and you can put your hand behind my neck. And now, what happens if you try to move from where I'm holding you? Forward, you're going to walk forward. But if you move from here, then it creates right. conflict. Instead, imagine we're an animal with four legs. And oh, then, it feels so loose now. And then you can take yeah. me to see your perspective. Mm -hmm. This is a really yeah. awesome uh, way to resolve conflict, to turn conflict into opportunity. You're going this way. I'm going that way. We may be locking heads. But let me just come around and take a look at what, at what you're looking at. Let me see your point of view. And then please come see my point of view. Huh, this is really cool. I like this one, this concept. So how, how do you take that a step forward? Like how, do you, how would you do that in your normal life? How do you, like, do you have an example of how you've done that um, without phys the physical contact piece of it? Sure. Um, I have a recent example where I was with my um, three-year-old nephew, and we had just walked his brothers to the bus stop. And we were on his way home. His mom just had a new baby, so he was the youngest, and now he's not. And he's going through some stuff in that adjustment. And he, um, so we're walking back from the bus stop, and he says, stops walking completely. I don't want to walk anymore. I'm like, okay, let's sit down. Right in the middle of the sidewalk. He did not accept that. <laughs> so, so I sat down and he sat in my lap and he was cold. So I just wrapped my, he didn't tell me he was cold, but I, I knew he was cold because he, you know, was, made himself small. So I just wrapped myself up with him. I warmed him up. After about a minute and a half, he said, okay, I'm ready. And then we got up and walked. I guarantee you with my own kids, that would not have turned out that way. I would have been like, no, we have a schedule. We have to go to the next thing, you know. We, I wouldn't have had the, the freedom of mind at that moment if I had my other small kids and the other, you know, the next things we had to do. It could have easy, easily have become conflict. Mm -hmm. But instead, it just turned out really easily. It didn't take much time at all, a minute and a half, and we moved easily through it. Wow. That is really cool. So, yeah, because you came into his perspective. Yeah. Physically, not just, yeah. not, not just mentally, but you were physically there for him. You had that combination of, I guess, mind and body. Yeah. So, it was really fun. I had several experiences with him that week that I was, I had gone there to help my niece with her new baby. And um, he was my he was my like Aikido example that week because I had many experiences like that, and they often involved physical contact and just softening as opposed to the collision. Mm -hmm. I like that viewpoint. I like that kind of perspective on 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 conflict. Yeah, and just really thinking of it, about that. And like, where where can you agree? Where are the points upon which you do agree? And what are your common goals, even though we may have two different perspectives or opinions, what do we agree on that we want to move together towards and let's find that mm -hmm. and go towards that. Mm -hmm. I think that would be another application for daily life. As far as keep one point, keep one point, dropping your mind down is a way of immediately calming yourself. If I'm listening to you, and I can keep one point, then my attention is going to, I'm also extending ki. My energy is expanded, just like a fire hose. And I can listen with my full attention and my full presence, not guessing what I'm going to say next or, um, you know, thinking of something while you're talking to me. No, keep one point is a way to be present with someone. And so when someone says, you know, phrases, getting out of your own head mm -hmm. and 
I see it very much as this. Very Instead of focusing your mind here, focusing it here. Yes. And it's amazing how different my physical body felt. The minute I, I you know, at first it seemed weird. I was like, how am I going to bring my mind down to there? But just by doing what you told me and, and like just bringing the focus to there, That's right. I could feel it drop down. I could feel yours just like an elevator. It's like you drop right down in there and your whole weight of your body, everything just changed. It was very interesting to feel that. Yes. Very cool. And that's why these four basic principles are such um, really brilliant pedagogy because you can teach them in you know, maybe 30 minutes and people can experience for themselves really quickly how when you use your mind differently, you get a different result. Mm -hmm. So in terms of flow and whole health nation and water being the theme, when we're one with the universe, he flows freely. When we can focus our mind on one thing, we can use our mind freely. When we're up in our head, as you said, things are moving really fast. There are lots of things going on. I mean, I usually tend to think of when that saying, you're in your head, there's a lot going on up there, right? Mm -hmm. So we use different techniques to slow our mind, breathing or meditation, but all that is is slowing down, focusing on one thing at a time, focusing on a breath or a mantra or your one point. So what would be the next step for somebody who's interested in all that you shared today? Because I'm, I'm sitting here going, okay, so what do I do? Yes. <laughs> like, so so <laughs> look for us on the web at South Carolina Key IQ. We have classes here Monday and Wednesday evenings from 6.30 to 8 o'clock and Saturday mornings from 9 to 10.30. Um, all levels train together. So we have beginners as well as black belts on the mat together. We're very much into safety and being able to play again the next day. So you'll learn, um, you know, in a compassionate environment with a lot of skilled people who've been practicing for quite a while. So South Carolina Key Aikido, www.southcarolinakeyaikido. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today and demonstrating all of this. It's, it's amazing to see what you do and uh, the techniques. Just getting a little glimpse at them, I'm excited to learn more. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Kara. So behind me, you'll see some weapons, weapons that we practice with. The wooden sword on top is called the bullpen, and beneath it is the staff, the joe. So I'd like to show you some katas, or pre-choreographed routines of cuts and blocks with these two weapons. First is bullpen kata number one and two, and then joe kata number one and two. What I'm going to do now are some katas, that is some exercises that are uh, all, um, the etymology is from cuts with a real sword. This is a wooden sword, but we act as if it's real for training purposes. Um, and as in all the things that we do in Ki Aikido, the purpose is to coordinate your mind and body so that you can maximize your natural potential. This is one of the vehicles through which we practice that. The purpose is to connect the tip and my one point and my voice, koku, all at the same time. Just like the bell ringing that I showed you at the beginning of our talk today. This is another example of the same idea that using of the sword, the bokken.
one opposite me having one of these, which is called a joe. It's a staff. It doesn't have a blade to it. Round. So each, it's fun to do this together so you can know the, um, from where all these movements originated because it is a martial art and this is a weapon and that is a weapon. So it's fun to see the two. Right now you're only seeing one side. You're seeing my side and I can practice by myself, coordination of mind and body. We often practice it. One person with the sword and one person with the joke. So that's fun too. Okay.